Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in NFL Recap. We're a little bit late. We apologize. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the NFL Week 3 Recap. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcast, Spotify, etc., whatever your favorite podcast app is. Leave some comments. Leave some nice reviews. Share the show out with your buddies. All that wonderful stuff. Chris, you were in Cleveland. I was. So the NFL recap is usually my responsibility, and uh, took four days off of work, went to Cleveland, had a blast, <laughs> watched lots of football, could talk intelligently about everything that happened, but... Got back home from work and buried, and this is the least prepared I've ever been. It's all good. So I apologize to you guys. Apologize to Gary. The recap that I'm going to do, no starting 11, no nothing. I want to talk about how good are the good teams. By good teams, I'm quantifying this, you're 3-0 and o teams. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3-0 teams. Sorry, Lions, you're left out of this. You're not 3-0. and o. You are undefeated. Yeah, you're two zero and one, but a uh, but a, a tie with just gonna, just gonna talk about these teams, right? A tie here. with the Cardinals. They would fit in the same conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. Because basically, what I'm gonna talk about is the record of all of these teams of the teams they've beaten is really bad, and the question is, how good are these teams? So we'll start with my favorite team on here. The team that I think the most of the NFL would rank the best team in the country, the Patriots, and they've got the worst record on here. Right now they're three and zero, and the teams they've beaten are zero and nine. We're talking about the Steelers, the Dolphins, and the Jets. Now, then, to be fair, they did beat the Steelers with Ben Roethlisberger. Yes, at home, but the, it, it was bad. It was, uh, it, bad. was it was thirty thirty three. It was and a he looked bad. Ben looked like. We've talked about this is something wrong. I, I don't know if the, the the Patriots just are in living rent free inside his head. I, I I don't know about that. That that's not a great football team. No, it, the Dolphins no. is barely a football team, and the Jets. I I don't even know how to e- equate what I'm watching here. So yeah, the Jets are pretty bad. I assume the Patriots are still really good. I think they're really good at football, but if this was college football. I'd be saying, hey, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're Clemson. Go sit in the corner. You're, 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 you're Alabama. You're, you're, yeah, you, yeah, you've beaten nobody yet. We think you're really good. We think you're going to be a contender for the, for the title. But today, you're 3-0, and and I just have a hard time just accepting it. Yeah, I can understand that. But to be fair, when you go and look at all of these other teams, it, you know, I don't think it's that different. Like, I, I, yes, I think that some of these three and O teams are three and O because of their schedule. I don't think that the Patriots are. I, I I agree, and I'd like to think that. But I've said the same thing about Alabama. And I've said the same thing about Clemson. I know they're much better football teams than what I've given them credit for. They haven't played anyone yet, and so it's hard to give them credit for. It. Well, here's the difference: is in the NFL. That doesn't matter. No, right? you're right. A, it doesn't matter. And B, those other teams, they're not working on smaller budgets than you. They get the yeah. same draft. They actually get way better draft picks than you because you're really good and they're not. And everybody has the same salary cap. That's right. Everybody, It's a hard cap. There is no, oh, this is a big market team and they get to spend more. Yeah. And if there's any team saving money, it's the Patriots because Bill is cheap. And even though it's not his money, he, yeah. just, he just doesn't care. The other team... To so play the Patriots this week, we'll talk about that in the previews. The Bills, <laughs> big on them. The Bills undefeated, helping my season win total, helping my money for them to make the playoffs. Dude, I can't be happier. But once again, trying really hard to mitigate excitement. They got the Jets. They did have to beat the Jets with Sam Darnold. Yeah, so, so at least that's something. They got the Bengals after the Bengals came back, like from a. A, a really 
close loss against Seattle and then got thrashed by the 49ers. Yeah. So, so I don't know that. And then they got to play the Giants with Eli. So that's the one win. Their record is one and eight total. But they played the Giants with Eli. I think if Eli would have played against Tampa Bay, they would be 0-9. Would you agree? Yeah, no, that, that's that's fair. How good are this Bills? I think that their defense is going to keep them in a ton of games. Dude, Josh Allen. Josh Allen has looked real. pretty good. I, I think we all owe him an apology from last year. And look, if we're going to apologize to Daniel Jones after one game, we should apologize to Josh Daniel. Josh. I help. Josh Allen after a I'm, season and a half. I'm not apologizing to Daniel Jones. Okay. Okay. But like it was fun to see. It was fun to see. But he was also playing at Tampa Bay. Dude, that Tampa Bay defense has been good though. Now they was, haven't played anybody on. either. Was was the Tampa Bay defense <laughs> good? Or Cam Newton that bad? Or see what I'm saying? I we don't. We, we're three weeks into this, and we still don't really know. I feel like there are so many teams. The teams that I say I know a lot about, they're just teams that I feel like I've known for years. But that doesn't mean but it, I no, know it, anything about them. No, it's it's completely different now. The Bills, we know that they've got a fantastic defense, yes. and we know that they have a serviceable offense. Correct. Right. So that that defense and that running game and the the style of offense that they play is going to keep them in a lot of ball games. See, they have a coach I trust also. But yes, it, you've also got. Right now, it's a quarterback that they have taught not to give the football away. And he's doing a really good and job of that. he's doing a good job of that. But. I'd I, take him as my quarterback. I mean, we'll. I don't know. There's some other ones I'd rather have. Well, yes, there's some other ones I'd rather I do think he's have. been really good. All right. But. So, the next team, a team that I think is in the conversation as the top three teams in all the NFL, your Dallas Cowboys. I mean, not your Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys. The yep. 3-0. and the team, the, they, they are the exact same as the Bills. They are 1-8 and eight as the record of the teams they played. Their one win is the Giants, but they got the Giants with Eli. How good are the Cowboys? Because here's the difference between the Cowboys and the Bills. I think the Cowboys are more talented than the Bills, a lot more talented than the Bills. This is not in record of ranking of who I think is better or worse. It just kind of How about this? Uh, so the Bills, they're... They played two games on the road. They played at the Jets with yes. a healthy quarterback. They played at the Giants with Eli quarterback. Correct. And then they got the Bengals at home. Correct. They haven't left the state of New York yet. No, but they did play two games. Well, I mean, it, they did. It was Jersey. Okay, New whatever. Jersey. Yeah, whatever. I got you. Uh, but the Cowboys, like, the only time that they left was to go... To Washington. To Washington. Correct. Who, if you watched Monday Night Football Oh, no, night. Washington's... Washington, oh. listen... I that was a train that, wreck. We, we're crapping all over the Dolphins. I don't know that if Washington and the Dolphins, which they do play this year, I'm actually really curious to watch that game. I'm going to tell you this. I think Washington has way more talent. I I think I trust the coaching staff on the Dolphins to actually get their team ready for that game. And I don't know. I think Jay Gruden knows that he is fired and he is ready for his next job. You may be right. Working for Bruce Allen and and – uh, who's the crappy owner there? Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder. Yep. They, uh, it just has to be like one of the worst employment situations in the country. Oh, yeah. It's got to be awful. I mean, those guys just have to be incredibly difficult to work for. I, I can't understand why they haven't put Haskins in yet. Now, that may be coming. Oh, I would wait until after the Patriot game. A, they weren't going to do it last night against the Bears. That would have been stupid. Get the guy killed. Agreed. Now, you get a. I think they have a bad team coming in this week. It might be the Dolphins this week. They got a they got a team coming in this week. Oh no, it's the Giants. They go yeah, to the, Giants, the Giants, which is a bad defense. But after that, they get the Patriots. I think you you go through the Giants game, you get through the Pats game, and then you send him out there. That's a that's a good question. Anyway, I digress. How good are the Cowboys? So the Cowboys are the difference in the Bills, where I think the talent on the field for the Cowboys is way better than the Bills. But I don't know that I trust. If we're talking head coach. Now, coordinators, I couldn't tell you a whole lot about the coordinators for Buffalo. Um, I, I know who they are, and I know their resume, but I don't trust Jason Garrett as far as I can throw him, and I think he's got smart coordinators around him. I think he's got really good talent on yes. that team, and he's just staying out of the way. I think he's and staying you know out what? of the way, and that's, that's a good 
gig for him. Being a Browns fan, I'd give my right arm for a coach that just stay the hell out the way right now. Yeah. Anyway. I'm with you. Uh, as far as the skins go, yeah. they got the Giants this week, Patriots next week, then it's the Dolphins. That's it. That's when but, you start Haskins. But after that, you got the 49ers at the Vikings, at the Bills. Well, okay, the, your schedule's you, tough. Yeah, You're yeah, going to play hard tough. defenses eventually, but you bring but that's him a good in time his to first do. game. If you can't bring him in in the, in the bye week, which the bye week's pretty late, then yeah. you bring him in against the Dolphins, right? Yeah. If you got to say we're eventually going to the kid, you bring him in against the Dolphins. No, that makes sense. I, I, that's what I would do. No, I'd, I'd absolutely do that. Our next team on that list, they play them. 49ers. 49ers are undefeated. Holy crap. Who had that? We, it, not us. Nobody had that. No, if you had not that, us. I, I'm just going to call you a liar, and I, I don't know. They, uh, I mean, to be fair, like, they've been favored in pretty much every game. Like, the, the first two were pick That's right. Even though they were on the road. Yes. So well, we we've waited for a long time to see this Kyle Shanahan thing actually happen. Yeah. And it looks like now their secondary is garbage, but I've said this for years. If I had to fade any position on the entire roster, it would be secondary, and I would double down on the amount of money I spent on my front seven. Oh on yeah. Defense. We, we've talked about this before. And they've done that. They might have the worst secondary in football. They got one of the best defenses in football. They, they get after people in the trenches. Yeah. And I I like watching it because it makes me feel good. Bill, who's a defensive genius, and Saban in college is the same thing. They both value the secondary so much. But I think they can because they have incredibly smart football players at linebacker. Yes, that's and, 100%. And, and it. Think, a lot of it, though, has to do with the way that your front seven plays. They, they they put so much emphasis on that secondary because the way that they blitz and the way that they That's attack, right. you have to have strong guys that can play man. I completely agree with that. You know, you got to be able to leave these guys on an island, and once you do that, well, you know, then what, you're good to go. Whatever Shanahan and the boys are doing, Lynch, of course, if I'm going to trust somebody to understand, hey, we can have a weakness here, it's Lynch. He played in the secondary. He was a safety. He knows what he's doing. Their record, one and eight. That one win, Tampa Bay Bucks got to play a um, Cam Newton, yeah, uh, uh, Panthers team. That's their only win. Other that, they got the Bengals, they got the Steelers. Two yeah. of them were on the road. Yeah, hard to do. Steelers without Roethlisberger. Now we get to three teams that actually have not terrible resumes. Okay, all right. I'm going to give you the Rams. The teams that they have beaten are four and five, so we're close to the rest of these are all four and five, close to five hundred, but under five hundred. They beat the Panthers with Cam. They barely beat them. They got out with a field goal win. I think if Kyle Allen plays that game, I just think this Panthers team will not that he's gonna be the next hot thing, but I think they're head and shoulders better with it. I just think Cam's done. We've talked about that. Yeah. They played the Saints, in which Drew Brees went out before the first half was over, so you have to make massive adjustments. Then they play my Browns, who we'll get to after we do this, in which I, I just think they're they're not a good football team. Yeah. Next game, team that I've given very little credit to and I can't really figure out, Packers. Now, obviously, we're not huge fans of the Packers. I no. like the Packers, but I don't. But I'm. But I'm. I know what I'm seeing, though. But but Matt Lafleur, like they completely rebuilt this defense, and I mean Pettin has got to get most of this credit, right? Well, he does. And here's what's crazy. So they're coming out. So we all know in in football, your first 15, 20 plays are all scripted, right? Yeah. They have scored the first quarter of every game. Oh they yeah, score I mean, all it, it, their like, points in the first quarter of first half. Right, the rest of the game, they're averaging four and a half points in the second half. They, they don't score at all in the second half. And my question is, is who gets all that credit? Because somebody is scripting a great script, and Aaron Rodgers is able to execute the great script. The offense is able to execute what script it is. When yeah. they get off the script, that offense doesn't just lessen or struggle. It goes to nothing. Now, yeah. they have played... The best schedule out of all these teams, they played the Bears, who is a great defense. They played the Vikings, who is a great defense. And the Broncos, who we thought was a great defense, they don't have a single sack 
or tackle for a loss on a quarterback all year. Yeah, Bradley Chubb has not looked good. Uh, Von Miller Von has Miller's not, not looked good. good. Like, here's the thing, though. I mean, they teams have figured out how to scheme around them because right. it, it, I think Quick the passes. rest well, the rest of the Broncos' defense isn't that great. So you, you had one really good advantage, and then other teams figured out how to get away from it. So, But it's just yeah. strange to me that the, the Packers' defense, A, is in, they've looked very good. But they've looked very good against three quarterbacks that me and you don't think very highly of. Yeah. So, yeah. like we talked about with these other teams, how good are they? What happens when they play a good quarterback? And I don't need them to play. I'm not talking about Tom Brady or, or, or you know, Phillip Rivers or, you know, Patrick Mahomes level great. I'm just curious as to when you play just a, a good quality quarterback that can move the ball around. Yeah. I mean, somebody, Deshaun Watson, I think is really good, really exciting, but he's not Patrick Mahomes yet. No, not you yet. Know, he might be there in a couple of years. What happens when you play that team? Somebody who can put points up That's and will. Point. And then we have the Chiefs, your Patrick Mahomes Chiefs. It's four and five. The teams they have beaten are the Jags. Road win at the Jags, road win at the Raiders, and then you get the uh, Ravens at home. In the Jags game, starting quarterback goes out midway through. That's and then true. Shoe, doesn't have a whole week to practice. Nothing gets thrown in. You beat the Raiders, who their only win is against the Broncos, which is an 0-3 team. And you beat the Ravens, who I think is a really good team, still a top-five team in the NFL. That's the best win any of these teams have. But you got them at home. Do we know anything yet? No. No, we don't. We don't. That's, that's what's so irritating is because this changes. All the time, right? Like, it's it's going to... It, you would think three weeks in that we would have a really good... Like, we know that the Chiefs' offense is still really good. We know that the uh, the Bears' defense is still really good. No question. We know, like... That, I mean, the Patriots are good. That's about it. I think the Patriots are good at everything. Uh, every like, I, I want to say that we know that Kellen Moore's offense is really good, but they haven't I played anybody. I, I, I told you I thought it was either going to be really good or really bad. I think it's really good. I like, do. even where you're talking about the Ravens being a top five NFL team, like, their only, their only wins are against the Cardinals, who are winless. That's right. And the Dolphins, who, who are, are winless. winless. You're, no, you're, like, you're not wrong. You're absolutely so, not wrong. So. And, and, and Lamar uh, Jackson, when, you know, when he goes up against the Chiefs, if not for two jump balls that went his way, he is a less than 50% okay. passer and less than 200 yards passing. You either said like, that in our group text or you said that on Twitter, and I didn't respond because I was in the middle of doing something and I never came back to it again. The conversation moved so much away from it. You do know that Aaron Rodgers has made his entire mystique off of, off jump, of, balls. Off I of know. jump balls. I know. I like know. I know. We, there was a day but, and a time where is, we said he's the greatest quarterback playing football right now, and 80% of his passes are throw the ball up real high in the air and, and let do, his guy go get it. And do three of his guys and three of the defenders and hope that one of his guys comes down with it, and his guys just seem to always come down with it. Yes. I, I, can't, I, I can't explain how that works. I but understand. we gave him a lot of credit for that. Where you're coming Are from. Are we taking I, it away from Lamar because he does the same thing that Aaron L does? Lamar is like... I'd sure like him to be like Aaron Rodgers. Lamar is like three games into this season. Oh, that, so, that, I understand it's way... I'm not saying he's Aaron Rodgers. What I'm saying is that is not an efficient number. You're, and it's not like the Chiefs are right. a fantastic defense, right? No, so that's where I'm curious because... Yeah, he had great numbers against the Dolphins and against the Cardinals, and it turns out that everybody has had fantastic numbers True. against those two. True. So now all I'm saying is that we don't know yet. Um, like, it's great that he can do that because if he couldn't, it would really make you worry. So I, I begin to change my opinion on how teams play, I think, against bad defenses or good defenses or bad offenses against good offenses. I think when your team get, I know we got to go and we need to wrap this up because <laughs> we actually have to do the rest of our show. <laughs> um, I think I think when teams start scoring so fast that it makes it there's so much pressure to score on every drive. When you play a team like the Chiefs, I don't know that their defense has to be great because the pressure on you to score every possession is so high, it just makes it that much harder. Yeah. And so 
because you don't feel like we can punt, play field position, and and have a better chance at scoring next time. No, you can't because there is no field position game. Every time you give them the ball, they are scoring. Oh yeah, and and I think I think that throws, I think that throws your offense off. So while they don't have a great defense at Kansas City, it does make it difficult to play them. We'll get off of that. That was my only question. I know we got to go. Let's. Uh, the, you want to do, do the do Browns? A, yeah, do it because I don't know how to do that quickly. I, I'd almost rather not do it. In in because I want to say this. Give something. give everybody a teaser because we will talk about the the Browns and the Ravens in the preview. I just feel like I'm going to be irresponsible if I say something that I can't break down fully, because I have some deep thoughts that need explaining. How about this? We can use that a teaser, right? We can use that as a teaser. So I'm going to be very hard on my Browns. I have a high expectation. I'm going to be hard on two individuals. Go and listen to everyone knows who those people are. It's Freddie and Baker. Go and listen to the NFL Week Four preview, and Chris will discuss that. So it'll be out on the podcast on Wednesday. It'll be out on YouTube very soon. Very soon. We'll see. I, I need 15 minutes to give you my digression Whew. of this team from three That's weeks. That's a long, okay. I, I, cut, th- cut, cut it to 10 and we'll put I it in the preview. I don't know if I can do that. We'll, we'll, we'll cut it to 10. We'll talk about this in the meantime. All right. All right. That's going to wrap up the show. As always, head over to tunicatravel.com, figure out more right there about all six of their incredible sports books. We love them. You'll love them. TunicaTravel.com. Follow us, all of our social media, all of our YouTube and podcast and everything else over at WinningCuresEverything.com. We'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.